to shock the world because he is none other than the Shaq Master! All right. Welcome everyone back to, depending on which one your listen is on, the Nostalgia Funhouse or the Retro Active Sports Podcast. I'm Andrew Lund, always joined by the great, the wonderful, the jamming johnny townsend from parts unknown the the co-host who you love working with because he always remembers to prepare and never fails to watch a movie he's supposed to watch today uh you know if you could give him a hint i don't know a clue <laughs> That's uh, behind it. the scenes uh andrew is the saint just so everybody does he puts that with me and he knows that my memory is that of uh literally a goldfish <laughs> <laughs> yes i i forgot to remind <laughs> but we're kind of doing the, we're doing the joint episode thing again today because this is johnny came up with this wonderful wonderful idea and uh it's bad just bad wrestling gimmicks the worst wrestling gimmicks there's been some fun ones there's been yeah. some awful ones i think we're gonna have a a a, a lot of those represented here today very excited for this uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun i think i think there's a difference between just bad though like a bad wrestling gimmick yeah and then kind of a bad fun wrestling gimmick and i that's think the same the, thing with the same thing with bad movies right yeah. like there's some movies that are just really bad and you just like there's no reason to watch them and then there's others that are so bad that they become entertaining and that they're that bad in a way yeah there is a difference or you give somebody to watch a movie after you pick it, and then they just don't do it. Yeah, um, I don't know what you're talking but, about, but I'm sure that's happened before. <laughs> and, and I'm sure if that ever happened, the other person meant nothing by it. They just forgot. <laughs> In fact, this person probably loves Tim Curry and really was excited to watch it. It just forgot about it. And the other person probably had a wonderful fun fact that the other person would really, really enjoy, but <laughs> now has to save it for the I'm, next recording. Even I'm very excited for this. This fun episode's fact. coming out after the last one. So it's a little <laughs> sneak peek in the how crazy <laughs> things could get here when you put uh two men in their forties, you know, trying to remember things. Yeah. Yeah. But, and I'm pretty certain we've both had some sort of uh, concussions throughout our lifetime, and yeah. that's not helping things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still remember the blue light, um, and I'm not <laughs> talking about the beer if you're from Western New York. I thought you talking about like when you go to Kmart and had those specials. Oh yeah, see that isn't that whacked that I think most people, if you go to like Western New York or Canada, and you're like, hey, what's a what's a blue light? Tell me, like, first thing that pops in your head when you say blue light, they think of, the, like, the bats blue, the beer, the light. Oh, beer. wow. Yeah, I don't remotely think but, of that. I think of Kmart. I, yeah, that's creep. Yeah. Definitely Kmart. Kmart. Definitely Kmart. Definitely Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> but we are doing bad wrestling gimmicks. And, Johnny, this was your idea. Yes. And I asked you a question off air, and you said you are not going to answer it until on air. That's right. So how are we choosing the winner? Are we choosing who we feel would go over in the match or who had the worst gimmick? My brain would be wor who has the worst, I okay. think. Like which gimmick is, for whatever definition, your own definition can be your own definition of which would be worse gimmick. I, I always also try to put myself in these wrestler shoes if I had been a professional wrestler and how would I feel if I was given each gimmick, which one would I hate worse? Probably another way I'll I'll think about this. Because we each came up with 16. Yep. And I'll also tell you, my list that I came up with had some that I really thought were truly really awful that I hated. And some that I that are really bad, but I just unironically have a deep, deep love for how goofy and dumb they are. And this is nothing against the wrestlers. Because as right. I get older, I realize these guys need money. They need to get dig out probably families or something to take care of and they need money so when you make it to the big time you kind of just do whatever vince mcmahon or 
Dusty Rhodes or whoever comes or Eric Bischoff, with. whoever yeah. tells you to do. Uh, yeah, and you know, and some of these wrestlers are so good that they were able to overcome these gimmicks, which is pretty impressive in a way. Because some of these are, are not or good. had a really cool gimmick, and then they got switched into something else. Um, yeah, going on there. But here is our first matchup. We have Disco Inferno himself versus Akeem, the African Dream. <sighs> yeah. Also, just a side note, <laughs> pro wrestling is always not all, obviously not always for the best. Really landed into stereotypes. <laughs> so, just know that going in for this list, might, quite a few of those may be represented here. Are you talking about that jive so, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'm talking about that time vincent man thought it'd be really cool to say a certain word on air oh geez uh uh okay all right i how do you feel i'm just really curious just in a vacuum how do you feel about disco inferno i love disco inferno because the gimmick was so bad it was good that the fact that he could go out there in a certain sense and still kind of get over when he has a disco theme and he never here's the thing though. Did he win a title? Yeah, it was never the never the big one. He had like uh, a but still though, I think he was a TV title champion, wasn't he? I think at some point, yeah. Uh here's the thing though. Big time WCW guy here. That's the one I grew up watching. So I saw a lot of Disco Inferno. The best Disco Inferno, in my opinion, is when he thought he was in the NWO. Oh, yeah, that was pretty good. That's when he was at his best. The problem here is, the, if it wasn't for his theme song and him every once in a while doing the disco dance, you would not know that that's what his gimmick is. Okay, so Disco Inferno has won three championships. That's that's three more than he needed. <laughs> uh, he has won, he was a cruiserweight champion. That's right, I'm, yes, yes. He was a tag team champion. Okay. And he is, he was a two-time, two-time television champion. Man, that's way too many for Disco Inferno. That carries a lot of clout with me, though. I always like the television champion. I would do, too, say, but... Would you say he's the second best television champion ever next to a good old double A? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even... In, in, I can't even say that out of my... Uh, Allegiance to double A. I would feel like he would deserve to smack me for putting those two names in the same sentence. Uh, I, man, I have a very mixed thing with this guy. I agree with you that that gimmick is is a fun, goofy gimmick. I, oh, man, I just don't. I, I, I'm trying to, this is the, one of those separating the art from the artist guy for me because he comes off yeah. like a real piece of work. Uh, you know, online and stuff and i just remember him getting in arguments with cody rhodes and stuff like that so i'm trying to separate that from this yeah we're i i think he went uh, i'm trying to decide which one of these games we work for i don't think either one of these i'm just upset about. that we can't use matt as a tiebreaker again i know <laughs> <laughs> we can't use matt and will stories as tiebreakers yeah uh what are you thinking who do you think you're going to move on on this one i okay so knowing the background history a little bit more of Akeem, the African dream. And I feel like I'm getting canceled every time I say that, if you know this gimmick, uh, he was the one man gang. I yeah. mean, he was a wrecking crew there. Um, he's always been that way. And then all of a sudden you take this imposing monster and you change him into this gimmick that supposedly, even though Bruce Pritchard, or, or, or if you get what I'm saying there, um, says that it was not uh, trying to insult Dusty Rhodes when they made this gimmick. But I got to say, Hakeem, the African dream is the worst gimmick. Like, if you gave me, if you had a choice between these two. this Yeah, is I'm picking the I'm disco guy. It, yeah, if you I said, hey, disco. You, yeah, if you told me, hey, you have to pick, you only get one choice, and these are the two choices, and you have to be one of those two, I think disco is the, the safer one. <laughs> So, so I'm gonna agree with you, yeah. 
Okay, so you don't want to be Akeem the African Dream? I most certainly do not. So you, I don't think I, I don't think Akeem wanted to be that. I, this is the first tournament we've done where it's uh, you kind of pick the loser. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> yes, oh, that's why here, this is fun. Here we All go. Right. Beaver cleavage. <laughs> yeah, I I did that versus Adam Bomb. So Beaver Cleavage is a Johnny can't stop because he probably because he forgot about Beaver Cleavage. First of all, fantastic name. <laughs> this is and if I remember right, that's um in his picture, that's supposed to be like his mom, right? Yes, and he needs mother's milk. Yeah, and they were and as a seemed like a very inappropriate relationship that you may see on certain websites nowadays. Yes. Um I bet she got stuck in a couple of dryers. <laughs> and the funny thing about this is the person playing his supposed mother, Beaver Cleveland's supposed mother, was uh, Chaz's actual like girlfriend or wife in real life. So that's that's a Vince Russo for you. That's a Vince yeah. Russo. Next to Adam Baum, the man from uh, Four Mile Island that uh, got caught in a nuclear explosion. Now he has nuclear powers. <laughs> uh, explain. Yeah, I love wrestling. This is this match up here is why I love wrestling. <laughs> I loved the ad. I loved Adam Bomb. Me too. I have like Adam Bomb is fine by me. It, this has got to be it's Beaver Cleavage. It's Beaver cleavage. Yes. <laughs> it's the, I, mean, I just had to talk about Adam Bomb for like two seconds. Yes. Just because I knew what was going to happen. It was going to be Beaver Cleavage. Yeah. And one of the names is just way more fun to say. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine if you're like Remember I show Angry Beavers? Yeah. Oh jeez. I... <laughs> okay, so next to the to the next matchup. Uh, we have Oz, who actually this is funny because we have a wow, Kevin yeah. Nash character versus a fake Kevin, Kevin Nash character. Versus a fake Kevin Nash character. We got Oz who I guess is the wizard from the land of Oz. He's based on the idea was to be a character from the wizard of Oz is where that came from. And it's horrible. And it is awful. Uh, he wears a mask to the ring and they actually had wizard of Oz characters and Kevin Sullivan came out, but underneath his cape, you could see him wearing like sweatpants. And it's pretty bad. at like the one thing that I saw. Versus the wonderful gimmick of fake diesel and fake razor. All right. So the fake diesel and fake razor is almost historical in a way. Yeah. Because that is exactly when Nash and Hall had went to WCW. And it made huge news. Right? That was a big, big deal. So to combat that, WWF decided, hey, we're going to announce on air that, hey, diesel and and Ramon are going to be here because they still had the rights to those names. So if you really look uh, closely, not only are we going to see, do we have two Kevin Nash's here? We also have the first of, I'm sure another appearance of a certain guy who, who's got to be, who's got to be Kane. <laughs> Does it got to be Kane? It's got to be Kane. It's got to be. Kane. Uh, I, 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 man. All right. So Kevin Nash obviously was able to overcome that gimmick. Yeah. Was it, uh was he no. Oh, he was Vinny Vegas after this. Yes, yeah. Which it, not, it's not any but, better. could have <laughs> but what could have made it him in the diamond stud. Yes. Uh but I just think the the fake you know Diesel and and, and Ramon is just such a terrible idea. Just even the idea of it was so horrible because the second the fans see that, they're going to know they're obviously, A, they're not the real ones, and B, that they were just lied to. You know they got another pay raise after this on a WCW, right? I think it was Nash or Hall were talking about it. Oh, I don't doubt it. When uh, when they announced that Razor and uh, Diesel were going to be on uh, Raw, that WCW ran to him and thought they were like leaving, like they were going to try and get out of the contracts or something. And they're like, we'll, we'll just give you more money. Don't do anything. And they're like, oh, okay. And they just signed 
more money. Yeah. And they weren't going to go anywhere for the record. Yeah. I got to, so, I would, in the beginning, I was thinking Oz, but when you think about it, this is like, the Oz one is more as a fun footnote to me, but because, you know, the guy underneath it was able to overcome it. Yeah. So it didn't, it didn't ultimately hurt his career, but it is a really bad, but it's also one of those where you're like, Hey, if you want to show somebody how goofy wrestling can be, you can just show this ring attire of him walking to the ring as this character. And you're like, Oh yeah, that's pretty funny. And it was uh, really the funny. other one, I think which is a bad idea in the first place. It like was just really awful. Nice. Yeah. Early 90s WCW for Oz. Yeah. The fake Diesel and Razor, it would be like, I'm going to be some guy that just got drafted by the Chicago Bulls and asked for number 23. Yeah. That's yeah, how just, I look at it. Right. Yeah. You just don't do that. So I think the the fakers go here. The fakers. Up next, the Spirit Squad versus the Fat Chick Thriller, Mike Awesome. All right. I hated the Spirit Squad with a passion. Did not like them. They were really annoying, which was what they were trying to do anyway. The only bright spot being Dolph Ziggler was in that group, and he kind of comes from there. And obviously, he had a great. Well, he's still going on, but he had a great career. Yeah. The but you're putting that against Mike Awesome, who himself was and literally was an awesome wrestler, and it gave him this gimmick where he would go around quote unquote chasing fat chicks. Yes. I really hated both of these gimmicks. Really, really. <laughs> I and and this is like no disrespect or body shaming, but when I look at this, if just coming from if you know what Mike Awesome was, like if you yeah. watch uh what is that? The one it, where Mick Foley and Terry Funk had a bunch of death matches in like in Japan? Yeah, what the hell was it? The martial arts one with Onita. I can't even. Oh, I know. Oh. So if you watch that stuff. Or even even his ECW stuff. That's the other thing, too. So if you watched him in ECW and then you see this guy, Mike Awesome, get tagged with even the, that 70s guy. Well, I, those are two horrible gimmicks for this guy. This guy was a monster. This was a monster. He wasn't only a monster, he's a monster who could move. Yeah. This guy got it. He was, in my opinion, one of the first big men. I mean, well, not the first, but one of the first big yeah. men that I remember seeing being really blown away by how active he was. And now going around the ring. And like he he could pretty much do anything he wanted to do. When he first gets to WCW, they do have him being out to be like this monster who can do that. And then all of a sudden he's like bringing giant women's underwear to the ring. Yeah. You know, it's just why you would do that. And this is, look, I don't want to speak for Andrew, but I, I'm a hefty dude. Yeah. I'm you know, the guy too, but it, I, why would you, why would you do this? I, I don't know. Like, I feel like this is worse than the Spirit Squad. I do. T I, I'm going to agree. And it's just on the basis that, like we talked about, we know what Mike Awesome was before this. Yes. Yes. It's kind of like the Akeem thing. We knew what he was before Akeem. He, he, well, the Akeem was pretty bad no matter what. But that adds the, you know, the the icing onto the cake to do it. Yeah. But I think the Mike Awesome gimmick is a hundred times worse yes. than anything else. And uh, more offensive. <laughs> so not only Mike Awesome, but the fat chicks everywhere. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Uh, so Mike Awesome goes on. The Boogeyman versus the Repo Man. Oh man! All right. <laughs> uh, I want to break down Boogeyman's gimmick. I'm the Boogeyman. Also, I eat worms. There, there. I just told you his gimmick. You forgot he about does. he's coming to get you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, Repo Man. Oh, this <laughs> how. This, Okay, so when you found out this was Barry Darso from, you know, one of the members of Demolition, I get, I think he was Smash? Yeah. Smash from Demolition, and then you find out now he's a Repo Man? It, I don't think either uh, one of these gimmicks is fun. Uh, I would never want to eat worms. So which one would you... 
I would rather be the repo man. Than the I would rather man. be the repo man. Okay. So also, less you, makeup you got to put on your face. That is true. Even though I would like the boogeyman's physique, I don't. Oh like yeah, the boogeyman. But the again, dude was dude was definitely in shape. But uh, isn't he like sixty years old, still looking like that too? I think so. Yeah. Like he was like ridiculously old to get into even tough enough. So we are in agreement. The boogeyman moves on. And he's coming to get who's over in the next round. That's right. He's coming to get you. So we got the Toxic Turtles <laughs> versus Duke the Dumpster Drozy. <laughs> All right. A little backstory for the Toxic Turtles. Obviously, this is in the, the height of the early 90s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle craze. Spoiler alert, uh, your man, your boy Johnny, that's my all-time favorite thing ever is the Ninja Turtles. Like, there's no. nothing I would ever put above that. No. So, I didn't know this existed until years and years later because this didn't originally air, right? This was, when they filmed this, you actually didn't see these two guys. It was, I, I'm blanking who they were, but uh, they were these, but I they had. One was Gilbert. Yeah, yes, one's Gilbert. But they had these outfits because they would wrestle in the independent scene as the these knockoff Ninja Turtle characters. And they made the mistake of letting Vince McMahon find that out. So, of course, hey, let's put them in the ring. <laughs> that's some good shit, pal. And you can't call them the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, of course, because that's already trademarked. So, uh, let's uh, say they're pretty toxic. It was Barry Hardy and Dwayne Gill. There we go. Yeah. So, which so they, most so quote unquote, the, the gimmick itself didn't last very long, but the video surfaced years and years later because, like, it kind of got this underground swelling of, hey, did you know that this happened? <laughs> <laughs> Top of this thing. Yeah. Uh, versus Duke the Dumpter, Rosie, who is a garbage man. Yeah. Would you rather be a knockoff Ninja Turtle? Oh, this is not even fair when I ask Johnny this question. Would you rather be a knockoff Ninja Turtle or would you rather be a garbage man as a wrestler? Growing up, I obviously would run around pretending to be Raphael of the Ninja Turtles. Right. And that was pretty knockoff. But as an adult, that would that just offends me to my core. <laughs> I have such a deep adoration for Ninja Turtles that that is just, I just really, really hate it with the complete passion. Uh, I'm not saying the garbage man gimmick in wrestling is a great idea, but I am saying that to be a garbage man in real life is a really respectable thing. One of my uh, one of my close pals when I was growing up, uh, he worked for this the city that he lived in for a long, long time, and he drove a trash truck, and he was also in a trash truck a lot, and that and he was one of the best dudes I ever knew. So I have a deep respect for that profession. Uh, I would, I would not be mad. Like if I had to choose between these, these two, I would much rather be a garbage man. Personally, I don't know about you, because the other one itself is garbage. Yeah, because uh, actually, I feel you could probably might get a little bit more out of the garbage man gimmick. Than, yeah, you know, knock off Ninja Turtle. You can start. You can, you have a starting place with the garbage man. You can start adding some stuff to that. The turtles, I don't know how far you're going to get with. Besides, we're knock off Ninja Turtles. So, knockoff Ninja Turtles, you are moving on. That's right. Toxic Turtles. Next is the right to censor. Oh, man. Jeez. Come on. I can't believe they actually put these two together. Uh, the right to censor versus Eugene. All right. The right to censor just based on their theme song is enough to let them move on. That theme song is the worst. Uh, it's just that siren over and over and over again. It's not even a theme song. Eugene is perhaps a savant that's his whole character I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna try and put it as nicely as possible yes so uh, so i'm gonna you want me to do this so i get canceled <laughs> you can carry on this after i, I don't think it's us getting canceled because we didn't do this yeah <laughs> so eugene is is a savant he, uh the wrestler came up with this idea that he is a mentally handicapped individual Right. But he has this crazy, like I said, savant. So when he gets into the ring, he just automatically knows what to do. Like he's just a wrestler. Yeah. And he would, and he loved wrestling so much that he would sort of copy wrestlers' moves. Yeah. If I remember right. And I think he was, 
Was he Eric Bischoff's nephew. supposed to be Eric Bischoff's nephew or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what's even more wild about this is even after he was let go by the WWFE, whatever you want to call him, he kept this gimmick going. Oh, yeah. Freight in fact, train. he showed up in a certain $5 wrestling as this gimmick. Good old Freight Train got him. That's okay. right. Freight Train, that's the real hero here, that's honestly. I'm not even Freight being... Train is... Freight Train rules. I, uh, I will forever uh, support Freight Train. He might be in my top 10. No. I love the and honestly, as a person, he's a sweetheart. Uh, the dude is awesome. How can you not love Freight Train? Yeah, exactly. If you don't know what All we're right. talking about. Check out Freight Train on YouTube. Just look up Freight Train uh, the promos on YouTube and have a great day. That is true. Uh, okay. Um, man, I one's way more offensive, and the other one is just incredibly annoying. That's what we're going by here. I think one's a. a one is offensive and one is trying to make fun of something that's going on. Cause right to center right. was like in the height of the attitude era. You can't do all this crazy stuff. So networks and other organizations are like, Hey, stop. You need to censor this stuff in a, in a way. And well, look where it got, and look where it got the WWE, right? They just made like a ridiculous amount from Netflix. So <laughs> Oh man! God bless uh, wrestling. Yes. God, God bless wrestling. I know some people will scoff at this episode and be like, "Ah, oh, wrestling, yeah, oh, you know it's fake, right?" But it is a beautiful art form that I think once you appreciate it, you appreciate it for the rest of your life. And, and honestly, I know I hate what's to, going on with these guys? It's and wonderful. I hate to tell you, and I hate to tell everybody. 99% of the stuff you ever see on television or streaming is fake. <laughs> yeah. As Chris Van Vliet said, you watch movies, don't you? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I feel Eugene is the worst gimmick. I agree. I would much rather be a right to censor. I mean, be put in that group. You get to wear nice clothing. Yeah. This one's going to break your heart. Oh no! I'll just so everybody knows I haven't seen Andrew's list. Oh yeah, we have the American Badass Undertaker versus Das Wonderkin, Alex Wright. <laughs> I, I I'm not even going to lie here. I hate with an extreme passion. Rolling, rolling, rolling! I, that Undertaker gimmick can't. Stand it. I know. I like I it. know that that's way more like the actual person. And I understand him wanting to freshen up his character because he'd been a quote unquote dead man for a long, long time before he switched to this. But that Undertaker character is so iconic and just so cool for me that this was a spit in my face. <laughs> and on top of that, getting lip biscuit of all. Oh, yeah, but didn't they call? Didn't he do uh, Kid Rock there for a while too? Oh well, yeah, you're making it even better for me. Uh, I forgot about Johnny being the music man. Yeah, like you ball with the, the ball before you bang the bang diddy. Him and uh, him and Trevor when we did the uh, <laughs> nostalgia Funhouse Hall of Fame. Yeah, we're the hey, ones who brought those. Give, uh, give us your nominees, Andrew. Oh, I'm gonna go with uh, Green Day's Dookie. Uh, Matt, oh, I think John Denver, Country Roads Take Me Home. Okay, that's good. Hey, Donnie, Brian. the Decemberist, pick uh, the Decemberist, you know, the band yeah. nobody's heard of. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even know if I'm going to find the right album cover to make the graphic for this. <laughs> <laughs> so I forgot about the musical genius that is Johnny Townsend. I, I it's especially in my 20s. I was very much a music nerd, I would say. Like, I was very in tune to it. Uh, very, uh, I've really lightened up on that stuff. Like, I'm, I'm, I used to really hate other people's music and be very mean about it. But I've gotten to the point now in my 40s where I'm like, just let people like what they have like. You Who cares? Pat and Waz Pat and Oswald bit about that. I'm sure I have. I've listened to all his albums. Okay. Yeah. So I bet I, I have. Like when he talks about that, when he's the musical snob in his 20s. I like it when he talks about all the ham. All the ham. 
That's my favorite. Trevor and I would quote that all the time. All right. Oh, yeah. uh, who? I really hate that American badass. I the Undertaker is such an uh, uh, iconic character to me. Uh, that that. So I you would rather that. be Das Wonderkin? A hundred million percent. You'd rather be. I love. Okay. For the record, I loved Alex Wright. I thought this was one of those like little quirky bad gimmicks that were so great and when they turned him into i believe it was berlin yes that was even worse but yes i think a lot more people remember alex wright than they do berlin yeah and i think didn't he and disco inferno have a program i believe <laughs> yes they were tag team champions yeah there you go so that's too At least something happened there i i very what do you do you like the american badass i liked it I thought it was something new. I thought it was something a little bit fresher. Um, it was definitely it was, newer. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit different because how long are you going to be dead for? There's a story that I heard. <laughs> for, really for a long time. <laughs> there's a story that I heard about somebody, I think it was on 10 Bell Pod, that somebody got into trouble with The Undertaker and probably why they lost this job because he was complaining about Duke the dumpster drowsy and stuff like that and all these occupational gimmicks he's like can you believe this garbage man and stuff like that and everything else and somebody went up to undertaker and was like and how long have you been dead for so <laughs> it, you know once that hit my head it kind of justified this gimmick a little bit more i just really hate it like i really truly hate it I like when you're I coming from such a supernatural and cool gimmick to that it just is such a yeah but they killed very, <laughs> very yeah. jarring very jarring for me i do not like it at all and when did the undertaker become dead like when he first debuted he always was oh my goodness he's you know what just a... pick after that one just pick after you gave me like this x files of he always he was <laughs> like Twilight Zone X Files. Out, of he's Bruce Willis, man. He was dead the whole time. I only Haley Joel Osment could see him, but it's so much cooler than coming out and being. It's this... so much more offensive to who the Undertaker was for me. Again, I admit that that's more like closely to the person. I can't believe like, we're Mark up uh, on this one. I also, uh, I do know that a lot of people disagree with me. They actually do love the American Badass Undertaker. I recognize that too. I just really, really hate it with with a complete passion. Do you want me to push it on for you? I will do that for you, my friend. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'm probably, uh, I bet more people are aligned with you. though. What a match we got here. So we're still in our first side of the bracket into uh, what would be kind of round two here. We got uh, Akeem, the American, or the, I'm sorry, the African dream going up against Beaver Cleavage. Uh, <laughs> I can't decide. <laughs> I feel I'm, I feel we're just going to be wrong. No matter which one we pick. I don't think either one of these gimmicks is one that you would want to portray. No. Uh, at all. I, I just really enjoy saying beaver cleavage quite a lot. My uh, immature <laughs> brain really enjoys that. I I think I would rather take the chance of being a white guy and saying, well, I've already done it, saying side, or drive soul bro a million times than going out into public and being the guy that is, "Quote unquote," lusting after his mother for mother's milk. Yeah, and his and his name's Beaver Cleavage. <laughs> we do. I wish I had a counter somewhere. Yes. <laughs> so I'm with you. Beaver Cleavage has got to move on. Yes. I mean, we don't know how deep that cleavage is. <laughs> so fake diesel and fake razor versus the fat chick thriller, like awesome. I think it's fake diesel and fake razor. I do too. I don't think either one of these are. Or if you're a wrestler and you said, "Hey, this is going to happen to you," I, I would very much have a lot of pity for you. But I'm I'm with you. And I understand a lot of gimmicks too are reused, but they're actually kind of changed a little bit. Where you yeah. are just being what somebody else just was. Yeah. The boogeyman versus <laughs> the toxic turtles. 
I feel like I saw this on a Saturday morning cartoon once. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> this cartoon right here. Yeah. Uh, Man, I, I'm fine with either one of these. Moving on. <laughs> They're both pretty, truly awful. I would say Toxic Turtles are worse. I, I agree. Yeah. I, I would say that's worse. I feel like you could get more longevity out of the boogeyman than that. oh and he did in, in all fairness Eugene uh, come on Eugene it is Eugene yeah okay see now <laughs> oh. see I could be I could be realistic <laughs> all right you already know my vote it's <laughs> round three <laughs> yeah. uh beaver cleavage versus big diesel and big razor just say it Johnny because I know you want to say it it's gotta be beaver cleavage Eugene or the Toxic Turtles? I would much rather be a Toxic Turtle. A hundred percent. Eugene's this, moving on here. This right here. Um, this is kind of fun. It sort of is a reverse tournament in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I think Eugene is worse. Oh my goodness! You put turtles in there. You know that, right? Where? Oh crap! Fix it. Fix it. <laughs> Uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. All right. That's better. Uh, there we go. All uh, right. Uh, please. Just somebody take me out. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, I just. It's just Man, there's I, a lot um, of jokes that I cannot make. And I will not make it's Beaver Cleavage versus Eugene. I would, I think I'd still, yeah, Andrew, which would you rather be? (laughs) You're gonna make me go first? (laughs) Jeez, (laughs) I know there's a gun behind that door, Andrew, but you know what? You go, I'll go first. I'd rather, I'd much rather be Beaver Cleavage. I would rather be Eugene. What? I would rather be Eugene. Than At me. least in Beaver Cleveland, your mom is hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're taking an iconic <laughs> show. So wholesome, so nice. At least, At least the Eugene character is like a savant. Like there's something behind there. I will say from my memory, and it's been forever, a lot of the times Eugene was a baby face. Like he was like people really liked liked him. Like it was very hard to hate that character. You want to cheer for Eugene. Yes. Though when he got to five dollar wrestling, he was the bad guy. Oh, I will yeah. say. Because you can't uh, Freight Train is, will always be the good guy, no matter what. He is the Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Five dollar wrestling. That man is the He's better than Hulk Hogan. Baby. Yeah. He uh, the ultimate baby face. He's, he's I, like John I, Cena. He will never go heel. That's right. I honestly, this is such a heavyweight fight here for this. <laughs> this is too easy. I I don't know how the other side's going to remotely come up to this, but uh, I'm cool with either one of these. If you want to say Beaver Cleavage, I, I that means I get to say Beaver Cleavage more, so I'm all for it. Beaver Cleavage. All right, I'll let you say it. Sorry. Beaver Cleavage. All right, thank God we're out of this one. All we'll right, we'll be back. We'll be back for that cleavage. <laughs> so we are on the next. What, what, I gotta bracket. say though, we're starting out. We're starting out with a great matchup here on this other side. <laughs> we have the Kiss Demon versus it's... the Gobbly Gooker. All so, right, I think the Gobbly Gooker is pretty infamous, but a lot of people don't realize the Kiss Demon. Okay, <laughs> what happened is Kiss the band. Uh, they signed like his contract with the WCW and they played a live, they played uh, live on one of the pay-per-views or one of the raw or one of the uh, money nitros. I can't remember which, but they're also called for a character to be the kiss demon. And it was because of this contract that they were forced, no matter how this demon played out, he had to be given a main event in one of their pay-per-views. So, it is it's a complete train wreck. <laughs> there was like two kiss demons. It ended up being Dale Torbor, but the first guy was like, I don't want to do this. 
Yeah, because why would you? It's a you, that's a gimmick that's dead on arrival. Uh, you have to be a giant Kiss fan, and again, I if you enjoy Kiss, have at it. I'm not gonna be mad at you at all. Just not my cup of tea. Versus the gobbly gooker, though. The gobbly gooker to me is another one of those. Hey, we're gonna set you up and then just, just, uh, just completely disappoint you. Or as we say in the south. A fart in church, right? <laughs> but that was such a buildup, though. This yes. is the same Survivor Series that The Undertaker, you know, debuted in. So you have two debuts of probably the the biggest, the most, uh, I wouldn't say most, but like the most stable, iconic type guy in The Undertaker. Yeah. And then one of the worst disasters in The Gobbly Gooker, played by Hector Guerrero. I would rather be the kiss demon. Than Here's the-, the thing though. If you're the the gooker, nobody's gonna know it's you. Yeah, but nobody's gonna really know it's you if you're the kiss demon. They see way more of you for sure though. <laughs> I think it depends on how much of a fan of kiss you are. <laughs> that is true. And at least that kiss demon did get a main event. <laughs> yeah, and the gobbly gooker is I feel is made fun of way more than the Kiss Demon. Oh, a hundred percent. I think the Kiss Demon is sort of forgotten about. That's how bad that gimmick was. But the Gala Gooker, they were hoping to set him up as being like a mascot for WWF, and it was so badly received they didn't even do that. <laughs> so, His biggest uh, moment is him dancing with Mean Gene in the ring. So that's pretty much. If I'm looking at both of these career, do I want to end up in? The Psycho Circus or the Dark Carnival with Vampiro ICP with the Kiss Demon, or do I want to dance in the ring with Mean Gene? I want to dance in the ring with Mean Gene. I also want to dance in the ring with Mean Gene. So, Kiss Demon, you move on. Are we in agreement on this one? I agree 100%. I think I'm gonna be controversial to some. I cannot wait. I know our good <laughs> friend Gary T is gonna say something. So, our next matchup is. Glacier versus the Red Rooster. Uh, Glacier was the idea of, I believe, Eric Bischoff. That- yes, Eric, Eric Bischoff was way into martial arts. In fact, he is a legit martial artist. I forgot what belt he'd made it to. Like, it's how legit. Did, how did Jay Leno beat him, though? That's a good question. You know, you know, uh, have you heard about this? Have you seen this? Uh, the The thing here, though, is also... A certain video game by the name of Mortal Kombat was pretty dang huge. So they're like, hey, uh, those uh, let's uh, make a Sub-Zero type guy and we'll get Glacier. I have a feeling if Matt was like not five years old at this point, <laughs> was watching wrestling all the time. Yeah. I think Glacier would have been one of his favorite wrestlers. I Okay. I'm just going to be real here. I, I truly really enjoyed glacier i i did too and then i enjoyed the guy i really really enjoyed the guy that he's going up against here in the red rooster who is just essentially a rooster and he bobbed his head back and forth i was (laughs) almost the red rooster red rooster for halloween one year (laughs) i was going to spike my hair just like that just i would have loved to seen that uh (laughs) unfortunately i think i was a ninja turtle so but these are pretty iconic when talking about uh, bad gimmicks in wrestling, both of these. I, and it hurts me to say this. It hurts the little, my inner child to say this, but I feel the Red Rooster needs to move on. Because Glacier wasn't that, it, it was, if Glacier was in, say, the earlier 90s instead of the mid 90s, I think that gimmick would have got over I think so more too. than a guy being a rooster. Yeah, I agree. Sorry, Terry Red Taylor. Red rooster moving on. Hey, the wrestler himself is not the problem. Yeah, th- that's right. Sorry, Red Rooster. Well, actually, I heard he is a stooge. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I'm next, just going by wrestling ability here. <laughs> next two is Max Moon versus PN News. <laughs> what? Wow, what a what a matchup here. Uh, so Max Moon. I like this is almost color coordinated. These two. <laughs> yes, I'm looking at it, they very much are. 
Uh, Max Moon is a futuristic fighter that Conan oh. portrayed for about two days and then was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Uh, this is what mid early mid 90s WWF type stuff. Yeah, and you can tell they looked at uh, you know, stuff like X Men and Power Rangers to make that suit. And then I'm surprised you- they didn't have like a hundred pockets. <laughs> Then you got PN News, which I was a big watcher of uh, WCW Saturday Night. Yes, yeah. I have no memory of this guy until I started watching like old pay per view reviews with on Wrestling with Regret. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I watched that channel a lot. And I saw PN News, and I was like, "This is the worst rapping gimmick in the world." He's no John Cena. No, no, especially when that when they had the contest for him to read like the to have him sing or rap some live yeah. and it just fell out at the bottom. Like it just stopped rhyming like <laughs> yeah. three verses in. Oh, uh, but he's also, his other problem was he, his rhymes were all like, Hey, my name is Johnny and I'm here to say, <laughs> it's like yeah. that type of rhythm to it. He's the, very, very, uh, anybody who raps like that is pretty square as a, you know, he's an L seven weenie. Uh, <laughs> So, Johnny. Yeah. I think it comes down to it. Would you rather be a future, futuristic fighter for a wrestler? Or would you rather be a, what looks to be a stereotypical early 90s rapper? Just physically, I resemble the rapper guy way more. I, me too. <laughs> but I would, if I had to, got to choose, I would have much rather be that futuristic Power Rangers type ripoff guy there. I feel, oh my goodness, yeah, because I don't. And also, think, I know I can't rap, so it's going to be just as bad as this I, guy. <laughs> I think that's what made the John Cena thing good. The John Cena, the master lyric, you know, lyricist. Or well, any, the reason that he even but, got the gimmick is because Stephen McMahon overheard him doing a rap. But that's what I'm saying. But he at least has a talent towards it. That's what I'm. Yeah, I agree. But I felt like this guy never had anything, and they were like, right. hey, "We're just gonna feed you lines, and you say it." So, because rap was becoming a big thing in during this time, like, "Hey, we're just we're gonna try to capitalize on that," and we did this instead. <laughs> so, I think he moves on. Yeah, PN News, you're moving on. All right, so I'm really disappointed I couldn't find a better picture of this because <laughs> we got Mantar. I couldn't get a good one with him in his uh, cow head or bull Well, it probably head. wouldn't fit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Speaking and, of not fitting, we, did, we don't even see the bottom of Val Venus here. <laughs> no. No. I like how this picture cuts him off perfectly. <laughs> I, I always said Val Venus should be the um, new spokesman for Hello Fresh. Instead of saying, hello, ladies, he could be like, hello, fresh. Yeah. But Mantar, who is, uh, he's a Mantar. I, I don't even know how to describe it. He's half cow, half man, but he can take <laughs> off the half, All wrestler. <laughs> half cow part <laughs> to get into the ring. Uh, great 10 Bell Pod episode, if you please check that out, um, if you love wrestling. Yeah, great, a fantastic podcast. They, I highly recommend them. They take this guy that probably not a lot of people know about or just remember him with this Mantar gimmick, and they doctor up that episode so well to the point where you're like, I can't get enough of this. Yeah. Uh, versus Val Venus, who, how do I say this, was, was an, uh, portrayed as an adult film star. That's right. That's right. Very much, uh, he would always be seen with a towel around his waist. Yes. And he would come out, and he would take off the towel, do a little kind of ravishing Rick Rue type dance, if you know who that. Yeah. Is. And in uh, fact, uh, one of the one of the m- most major feuds he was in was all about getting his penis chopped off. <laughs> yeah. So, pee Yeah. Pee pee chop chop pee pee. Another yeah. geez, Kai and Ty should have been on here too. Holy crap! I completely forgot about that. After a while, there too, they were. What's funny is that they wanted to cut it off when there was a guy in Kai and Tai, if I'm not mistaken, named Dick Togo. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but he was he was probably uncut. Uh, let's... <laughs> kind of like how I'm going to probably edit this podcast. Uh, 
right. Uh, so, Mantar is widely considered one of the worst gimmicks of all time. Like, if you go see any list of worst wrestling gimmicks, he's always near the top, if not the top. I Val Venus, just in hindsight, now he was he got pretty over during his time. Yeah, but in hindsight, it's such it's not a, it's it's not good. <laughs> I I still would say Mantar's worse. But if you're going to say, hey, you can either be a quote unquote six symbol or a, a the living embodiment of a half cow coming to the ring. <laughs> With your head that's so big, you can't even get into the ring with it on. Which that could still technically be Valvina, is what you just said there. Um, uh, I think so. I think Mantar moves on. Mantar moves on. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So we have the Misfits in action. Oh, I can't believe I forgot about them. Versus Tugboat. So. I already know who wins this easily. Misfits in action was a group of kind of like jobbers, you know, just regular old enhancement talent pretty much other than when they had Booker T and he's changed his name to GI bro. Ugh. But in, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken in misfits in action, we had uh Chavo Guerrero jr. As, Something I gotta look this up now. Yeah, look at uh Hugh Morris was uh Hugh G Rection. I do yeah. know that one off the uh, top of my brain. <laughs> the girl was major guns. Yes. <laughs> what way to put it to Andrew? The girl was major guns. Well that, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you had okay, Hugh Morris was oh, he was also captain slash general Hugh G Rection, Booker yes. T G I Bro. Uh, you had Van Hammer as Private slash Major Stash. Then you had Major Guns. Travel Guerrero Jr. was Lieutenant Loco. Oh, she was a major, Andrew. You should have put some respect on that. I should have. <laughs> the Wall I, I, I don't know, was Sergeant A Wall, and Lash Larue was Corporal Cajun. Now, how many belts do you think they won, Johnny? There's at least one. Three. <laughs> I would never guess that. Okay. I would have guessed one, two tops. So Lieutenant Loco got cruiserweight. Not yeah. a problem. Love Chavo. Um he's he's gonna make he's gonna make another appearance on this. Oh, thing. he most certainly will. Uh General Hugh G. Rection uh <laughs> was a two time United States heavyweight. Champion and Cap or Corporal Cajun and Lieutenant Loco were once tag team champions. By the way, I used to be a a, a fan of Hugh Morris because I thought he was really sweet seeing this giant guy do a, a really good uh, moonsault off the top rope. It was really impressive. And another fun fact: he was Goldberg's first opponent. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, uh, but Hugh Erection is always a very funny thing to me. Uh, and Tugboat. I love Tugboat. I love Tugboat, oh, ironically. When he became Typhoon, yes, it yeah. broke my heart. I think this was one of my first like wrestling, like break my heart, like why would you do that? Yeah. So Tugboat has a special place in my kid's soul. He's going to make another appearance on this list. We poor, love you, yeah. friend. We love you, friend. Yes. And and by everything I've heard, he, like outside of the ring, the dude's a, also a sweetheart. So uh, I think by far, I would much rather be Tugboat in this. <laughs> so, yeah because you say hey do you want to be tugboat or hugh erection i like the so if, in def- you know in defense if if i was huge erection i would probably need to give myself a tugboat i'm just gonna give you like a recorder <laughs> we just get a, like an hour long like audio or something of johnny just saying huge erection and beaver cleavage just over and over but in this is a great this is a great day for me <laughs> So, Misfits in Action, you were terrible. Yeah. Oh, my God. Here we go. Oh, he shows up again right away. Yep. Yeah. Uh, here we got the Mex- the Mexicools and Kerwin White. I had forgotten all about the Mexicools, uh, but seeing those lawnmowers definitely yeah. brought back that memory. As they come to the ring on lawnmowers. Um, who was it? Like, Super Crazy, Hoovitude. Yeah. Very much giving in to stereotypes, both of these. Yes. And then what's funny is you got 
Chavo Guerrero playing crew and white. Who's a white guy. Also, damn it. I couldn't even find it. We could have got Dolph Ziggler back on the list. Cause he played his caddy. That's right. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Kerwin White, originally Chavo Guerrero, who is, uh, just so you know, not a white guy. Yeah. But that's the point of the character is he kind of denounces and decides that being white is the is what's the greatest thing. Didn't he have the saying, if it's not white, it's not right? I'm pretty I'm pretty certain, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's true. <laughs> it's truly awful. If, uh, you know... I would not want either one of these because they're all they're both incredibly offensive in different ways. Kerwin is way more offensive, I I feel. And I would and if you got this, and if you told me, hey, you're gonna be this, but you get to ride a little more to the ring, I'd be like, well, at least I get to ride a little more to the ring. Yeah, but they wore in one of them, they wore like gardener jumpsuits. Neither one of them are great, man. I, this <laughs> is hard. I I think this is uh Six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. I remember seeing Kerwin White show up for the first time and thinking, and this is even in like, you know, I'm in like, I can't remember when this was, early 2000s, right? Is that right? When he does this, I think, I think it's just after Attitude Era. And thinking, this is so god awful. Why would you want to do this? No good could come of this. (laughs) Yeah, that was his catchphrase. If it's not white. It's not right. And this is in my early 20s when I was, when I thought being funny was saying offensive things, and I was offended every time his character was on the screen. Uh, At least it's all cool. Yeah. I I think, I think Kerwin moves on here. And what's even worse is Chavo is such a really good wrestler. What makes me upset about the Mexicals is that it was because it was super crazy, uh, psychosis and Hoovy, and those are oh, oh man, all, all four of these guys are crazy good. And then you give them this crap thing, but then you take Chavo, who is good in his own right, uh, probably one, definitely one of the greatest wrestling families ever in the career. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And you give them that, but yeah, I would have to say you. you Sounds so bad. At least you get a long one. Um, <laughs> Erwin White moves on. I, I think this is the push. That was a push one. Oh we, no! We, oh we no! Got good old Fred is coming back with the Shock Master <laughs> versus another Glenn Jacobs. Thank God they gave him Kane. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> as Jerry Lawler's personal dentist, Doctor Isaac Yankum, who. Obviously had bad teeth. They made sure to point that out. Yeah, why? I don't under. Why would Jerry Lawler go there if he had bad teeth? <laughs> Jerry Lawler needs to make better decisions. <laughs> Very obvious from that. Yeah. Uh, these are two notorious for me. Both of these gimmicks are so bad that they're good. <laughs> I think what makes the shock matcher situation is a lot worse, and I think that's what hurt the gimmick. Yes, because that's the they set this character up to be a big deal, and this is on live television. Uh, if you have not seen this, you can find it all over the internet. It's it is worth the watch. He bursts out. He's been introduced by the likes of Sting, Ric Flair. These big oh. names are there, and he comes out and he trips immediately, to, falls to the ground. His helmet comes off. Which I, I present to you, even if he had gotten through that wall just fine, he's still wearing a, a sparkly Stormtrooper helmet. And Ole Anderson did his voice. Yeah. This character was a no-win. This character was never going to win. But but I present to you this also, Andrew. A couple of years back, I can't remember who, do, who does the uh, WWE toys. I don't remember who does them. Is it Mattel? It's Mattel now. They were releasing a special Shockmaster figure, and I really tried to get it, but it became way too expensive. I wanted it badly because I just love this, just the idea of this character and how. I think there was potential there. And well, I mean, there was. They turned him into the super. Well, he became something after the Super Shockmaster or something like that. Yeah, or something. But that was nowhere near or as good or fun. Like a, he came out with a hard hat later on. Yeah, they they really played on the fact that he tripped and fell. Yeah, which I don't know what else you're going to do. You can't. <laughs> I 
I still like the Shockmaster better than Dr. Isaac Yankum. I I unironically think the Shockmaster is one of my all-time favorite moments in pro wrestling. I think it was just a myth. To the point where I consider it a myth. <laughs> like, it's this legendary thing that happened in pro wrestling. Is this, like, you can go back, you can watch that video five times and each time pick out a little something different. I think probably in the top maybe five, ten things that whenever you talk about pro wrestling and certain moments, good or bad, you're always going to get the Montreal screw job. You're always going to get WrestleMania three and you're always going to get the shock master. And I would throw in hell in a cell. Yeah. Those are all the things. And then probably like a TLC match. Yeah. And then you're going to get, Rick you're gonna get Mick, Mick yeah. kind of thrown off the cage. Jeff Hardy getting speared from a ladder. Uh, you're going to get the other two that you mentioned and shock master. That can kind of like we just gave you the history of pro wrestling in the since the eighties, right there. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I love the Shockmaster a lot. I think, Do, uh, I think it's a testament to how lucky Kane was that they actually gave him the gimmick of Kane, that he overcame being a a dentist who, I guess, also loves to wrestle. Yeah, I don't. I mean, who do you think's moving on here? Kane's got some bad, bad game. Glenn Jacobs, come on. He was the Christmas creature in like Memphis. That's right. Yeah. That was a horrible one. I, you, yeah. There's so many hard videos or pictures to find of that one. I was going to put the Christmas creature up there, but I think Isaac Ankin should go on. I agree. I just love the Sharp Master too much to. I, I think it's just too much centered around that one moment. And I also kind of think the Shock Master has sort of become. A beloved thing now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so our next mess up, we have the Yeti from that doesn't look like a Yeti. I don't know it looks like a mummy, but it's a Yeti. <laughs> uh from WCW and then Friar Ferguson, who was a monk that didn't talk. That's a good gimmick for a lot of people now. Yeah. Who are not good at talking. Uh, uh, let's not forget though the Yeti. Uh, not only debuted awesomely, but uh, helped for some reason do a double uh choke hug. <laughs> Don't even know what, what gyration. Uh, <laughs> he really reminds me. If you go back and watch it, Hulk Hogan's already in the ring. Who's he? Who's he getting hugged by? Who's he getting bear hugged by? I forget who the, the other giant, wrestler was. Isn't it? Oh, I think you're right. Yeah, the giant. And then the Yeti, watch alongs. the Yeti shows up and goes into the other side. So Hogan's getting bear hugged from the front and the back. We got to try and do a watch along for like a match. I agree. Oh, post man. Them. I don't know where we could post them, but just post them somewhere. But we got to do, we got to do a watch along. And by the way, just so everybody knows, a Yeti is basically like a, a snowy version of the Bigfoot. Yeah. And this is a no way a, ye- a yeti this is a most certainly a mummy <laughs> and thinking about it i think i'd rather be friar ferguson than the yeti yeah. you'll never mess up any of your lines that is true i think they gave him a notepad yeah and the yeti i would be really concerned since he's a mummy when he gets in if he makes it to the, oh, the finals okay, here okay we're gonna go <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna go on to round two here that mummy could be a real milf <laughs> Just a uh, mummy I, I like to have a, be tried. a friend with. To all the listeners out there, I try. Uh, <laughs> I mean, of course, a mummy I'd I'd like I, to friend. I I uh, I was trying I'm to choking on it. <laughs> I'm choking on all lines. <laughs> to write the censor treatment over here, and it's not working. So, Kiss Demon versus Red Rooster. <laughs> Jeez. Um. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Both of these are pretty bad. Would you rather be a demon from a band? Probably at this point that most people didn't really know about. Wasn't a like, band in the streets, but a demon in the sheets. I would say Red Rooster still, even though it hurts me. Yeah, I think so. I mean, at least the kiss demon looks kind of cool i said kind of there tn news News versus mantar mantar goes on yes thank you 
<laughs> okay, Misfits in Action wow. versus Curl and White. So funny, funny puns versus Chavo's taking on himself here. Yeah, Lieutenant Loco versus Curl and White. I would much rather be Lieutenant Loco. A hundred percent. Hundred percent. The Yeti over over. Yes, Isaac Yankum. Yep. <clears throat> the milf moves on. Man, Mant- oh my goodness, Mantar versus Red Rooster. I think it's Mantar. I do. I, yeah. If I had to choose between being a cow or a rooster, I'd red. I'd red, I'd much rather be a big cock. I th- <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh geez. It's, oh man, it's the catchphrase that gets me with Kerwin. Yeah, White. yeah, I really I hate go, it. I gotta go because I would be like, ah, oh. <laughs> like we got two choices for you. You can be, uh, the Yeti that looks like a mu- like a mummy, or I say Yeti because the one guy on like I think he's on Call of the Holics right now. I just loved how he said Yeti. Well, he kind of if you go back and listen to it, Tony Schiavone sort of says his name that way. Oh, okay, um, or you can be. A stereotypical upper middle class white guy and go around saying if it's not if it's not r- white it's not right i'm gonna be like you know what i think i'm gonna take the weird mummy character yeah I, yeah I, I, just no i agree after i yeah, said yeah. weird mummy character no <laughs> David, no mantar versus Kerwin white that's a bad johnny um uh, <laughs> man all right this is a kind of a that's it's also between just a really bad gimmick and uh, an incre- incredibly offensive gimmick. Thank God Chavo is <laughs> such a great wrestler that he overcame. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, I do think that the Mantar is way more iconic Yeah, when it comes, I- when it comes to bad gimmicks. I think Hero and White, you just want to forget about. Yeah, I... I- I really detest that one quite a bit. So Kerwin White moves on. I guess so. This is such a bad final. <laughs> oh my goodness. And we could have the mummy here as or the ante here, just so you know. Uh, uh now for our final for what we're saying is the worst wrestling gimmick out of these 32. There that made it this far is say it, Johnny. Oh, Kerwin White. <laughs> no, no, I was gonna. No, you didn't get to say who is facing. Oh, sorry. I yeah. Um, uh, you. I gave you this chance. You gotta leave it to Beaver Cleavage. Oh, over Kerwin White. I think I, 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 I'm gonna. I'm gonna present this to you. Okay. I detest that Kerwin White gimmick so much, and I'm personally offended by it so much that even though this is technically a tournament to crown the worst and he should be it that i don't think it deserves that <laughs> and beaver cleavage is just way more fun to say so i'm going to say beaver cleavage wins this whole thing because i would be proud andrew proud to say that the nostalgia funhouse and the retractive <laughs> sports podcast two podcasts that are synonymous with my and your names I'd be proud to have the stamp of approval of Beaver the Beaver Cleavage. <laughs> so we're, you're saying Beaver Cleavage is where I put Cleavage. my vote in for Beaver Cleavage. I kind of got to go with you. That's what I'm talking about. Because I feel Chavo, and this is not in the aspect of anything crazy, but I feel like this is one of the last things when you think of Chavo, you think about, but whenever I see Chaz... I think headbangers because he was mosh, right? Yeah. 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 I think headbangers and beaver cleavage. Yes. <laughs> and then when I think of beaver cleavage, I think of some of the worst vignettes and everything else. Yep. But so, a hot mom. <laughs> so beaver cleavage, you are the champion there. <laughs> yeah, you I- are the worst gimmick. For the- Congratulations. I, I guess. I guess. I, 
I know we'll never get Chaz if we ever want to do an interview with him or anything, if we have that opportunity. What are you talking about? We, this is a huge honor. <laughs> if anything, this is going to make him reach out to us. and be like, hey, let me on the show, fellas. <laughs> True. I uh, Should we do later on, obviously not soon, but in the future, uh, gimmicks we actually liked? or Because <laughs> I had another idea that, I, I mean, I know we're on air here, but what if we did yeah. like, worst wrestling finishing moves oh i'd love to do that i love to do yeah. tag teams as well there's a lot of stuff we can do with yeah we got a lot of fun we got a lot of fun i want to do fun. terrible jerseys like good jerseys too oh yeah yeah um, new jersey <laughs> all right so you said uh, terrible jersey so i just had to take the shot so this is like what we said combined effort between our two podcasts kind of sharing the bill here uh, you can catch both of them on the Beat ICBP Radio Network, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, check out both YouTube channels for the Nostalgia Funhouse and the Retroactive Sports Podcast, and check out the Facebook page for both. And um, you got anything, Johnny? Yeah. Remember, if you're having a difficult and hard day, you can always just leave it to Bieber Cleavage. That being said, good morning, good afternoon, and good night.